give numbers if you um, contact her. Yeah, and she said, thanks. Glad you're coming. Why do they make it so difficult? <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's talk about the language summits. And, and let's have Ralphina's phone number. Her email? I have her email. So if the language summit is next week, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, if you go to the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute website, you'll see Native Languages Summit to kick off. And you can visit, you can see the program. We'll take a look at that. You could read more. Uh, and then the read more. Uh, where? Well, I guess Amy. You could, you could probably contact Amy. Ralphinia is the one to contact. Uh, and it's Ralphinia Dibdahl. It's at, Dibdahl, yeah. At and so the other link, let me see if the other link is still there, because the other link just had the email on it. Ooh, but their nice program is now ready to view. Uh, let's see. In the news. So, uh, shucks. Well, you can contact. Uh, I can tell you the exact email if you want. Okay. It's R A P H. Did, didn't you just write it down, Bob? R A L P H E N A. R A L P H E N I A dot Dibdoll at. Now, what comes after the at? How do you spell Dibdoll? D Y B D A H L. At sealaska.com. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the rest of them are sealaska.com. Yeah. Somebody would stop scrolling them quite so fast. Well, I can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? Who's away? Right there. Ah. So under the contact. And all you have to do is just say, I'm an intermediate learner. I'm coming. Uh, I'm with the Chone. And this should get you seating with the with the advanced learners, not really with the fluent elders, although we will be interacting with them and trying to get folks to mingle during meals. Uh, there is a bit of a structure, though, just to try and sort of keep them in the language as much as possible. And it is going to be like a lot of listening to folks speaking, and there will be chances to just talk as a group. And so one of the big reasons was to try and say, we don't get this many speakers together. I don't know when the last time it's happened. And so we want to try and maximize the time that they spend in the language. If you go to uh, Sea Alaska Heritage, uh, if you go to their website, sealaskaheritage.org, and if you cannot make it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there'll be a link on their website to just watch it. The whole thing will be recorded. The whole thing will be on 360 North, uh, including if there's breakout sessions. Like, let's say uh, the Haida language group is going to go here, and the Klinkit language group is going to go here, and the Simchan language group is going to go here. They will be filming all of these three things. And what they would do on 360 North is show this one, and then when it was over, it goes time delayed shows that one and time delayed shows that one and then now we're back in the main hall and then it eventually just catches up to live and so the ktoo and 360 north they filmed the legislature so they know how to do this stuff um and there will be headsets if you need them we want to challenge ourselves to stay in the language but if if you're feeling like overwhelmed or gee, I, this must be really important, you can put on the headsets. Most everything will be live translated uh, as we're going through. And then uh, in addition, at a future date, uh, this, it'll, the whole thing will be made available to watch. The whole thing will be transcribed and translated. Uh, but that's a big beastly project. But that, that is the goal. And so, if you are available, Monday, 
in here, the advanced clinket class is going to meet, and we have invited the Dakka Ku'u, the inland peoples who are coming down here. There might be up to 30 of them. We'll see who's all coming in that day. Uh, but so feel free to join us here if you want to. And then uh, this is a chance to really experience a lot of Tlingit. There will be uh, hot kill speakers, Haida speakers, and Samalga speakers, Simshan speakers. And we've tried to reserve spaces for them so that they have opportunities to, to get together in their languages as well. Uh, we will probably be encouraging at some point uh, those who are ready to sometimes maybe say something, share something. Uh, it's nothing that you have to do. Uh, but this takes the place of our class next week. So we won't be meeting here. Uh, there won't be the online 530 gathering of the class. Uh, just watch as much of the summit as you can. And then we'll also, we'll have a chance to sort of reflect on it, ask some specifics. I will be there. You can email me stuff. I'll try and get to it in the evenings. Uh, and then the week after that, uh, I'm in Hawaii. And so if you want to, I'm going to probably just use the same link. Uh, we're not going to have class at Thanksgiving week. I think there's enough material to sort of all do all next week. And then you get a week to sort of uh, practice your lists, make sure your lists are where you want them. If you're interested, uh, you can come to our class link between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, Alaska time. And I will be defending my dissertation if you want to watch that, because uh, that's going to be happening. On what day? Tuesday. OK. <laughs> 20th. Okay. Good. Any questions? Any? Did you say 2 p.m.? 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Alaska time. Alaska time. When on Monday will the inland Tlingit people be here? 5.30 to 5 7. Okay. That'll be in, in here. Uh, as long as they can. I think everybody gets here. I'm pretty sure that that's, they said they'd be here on Monday. I'll double check the emails. But. And then it's a good chance for us to sort of get prepared. If there's uh, what I'll probably bring on Monday to that class, and I'll bring it to the summit as well, is I'm going to try and condense down like a clinket survival guide. Like, I have to use the bathroom, and <laughs> I'm hungry, and say it slower, and I don't saying? understand. <laughs> and and uh, Keep going. It doesn't matter that I can't you know, just stay in clinking. You know, there'll, there'll be some things that we'll, I'll try and put together uh, over the weekends that we've got that for the learners. Uh, and then during meals and stuff, there'll be times where we'll say, uh, go sit with the speaker. And then there'll be times we'll say, go sit with somebody you don't know. Because this is also a chance to really just visually see who's in the language community, those who uh, are fortunate enough to make it here. And then to think about what kinds of things we could be doing. You know, what are the next steps? Um, and how can we do these things better and more often? Um, yeah, any thoughts, questions, concerns? About anything? Is there any language questions, things you're thinking language about? Language question. Okay. I saw um, that you had written, Hastu Sax U Huadegich. <laughs> oh yeah, and I was I tried really hard to figure out how you would say vote in Shingit, and I did see one of the stickers that had gich, which I thought was a command form probably. But I, it's you know obviously there's no direct word for vote. Yeah, we. So could you talk about how that gets into Shingit, or what they what we're really saying or mean? Yeah, we had some. Uh... Did you already do this? No, we had some interesting conversations about it. We had to go. Um, so, like how to look something up and then how to do some of the, the deeper level stuff to see, well, what am I actually saying? How does this actually work? Um, because we'll see that Clinkit has, it's really interesting the way that Clinkit works to say, like, is there a direct way to say that thing? Or do you have to talk, you know, 
and, and, it, and so it, it reveals interesting things, right? So the first step is to go in uh, under, uh, I would start with the Clinkit Verb Dictionary. It's just, a, it's just a place that we should be familiar with. Those of us who learn to speak Clinkit, like our verb dictionaries fell apart, you know, and so that's the, <laughs> sort of the, that's the, you know, that's what we want to see. And not that you're just sitting there bending it, right? <laughs> you're, you're getting into that thing and, and you're really understanding. And we write clink it a little bit different, but like all of the sample sentences in here, they're just, there's just some amazing things that you can find in here. So we'll go down and we'll look for uh, vote. So when we come down here, we see vote and it says uh, dikik. So you know, one is the first part is di is telling us what the classifier is, and we would call that a zero group plus d classifier these days, and then b is the verb root. And so uh, there's, the way we write verbs now would give a little bit more information than that, quite a bit more. There's just some more things that you need to know in order to really use a verb. And in the 70s, like the speakers know how to do that, but I don't think the do the ones who were documenting the language and making teaching materials didn't quite you know they knew how to do the stuff but didn't know how to explain how to do the stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is this happens in English all the time with irregularities or you know if you if you had a you know I don't know if I did any type of the dangling modifiers conversation. I had a friend who was raising her son like and speaking only Spanish to him. And I got in a car and we were driving around with a, uh, we were all poets and we had this visiting poet. And I was just making conversation. I said, hey, how's it going? You know, just raising your son. And, you know, I was like, with just Spanish because I want to try that with Clinkit whenever we have kids someday. And she said, it's going great, but he's dangling his modifiers. And she was like really <laughs> upset about it. We just laughed. We we're like, because I was like, he's damn kids, you know. <laughs> But unless you're a real language person, you're not always, you know, even if you're teaching someone from birth, you're not always, you're, you're fixing things, but you're not always getting into the mechanics of why. And so for Tlingit, to document a verb, there's a few things that are just missing sometimes in this, in the, in this dictionary. And really what they are, uh, it tells us a lot of information. There's only a few things that are missing, and, and that's every verb has a conjugation class. And it's this kind of hidden sort of thing. It pops up um, in all the command forms. So when someone tells you to do a verb, like if they say, uh, gidan, you hear that g part, and that's a g conjugation, which means kind of an upward type of a thing. And if they say, qanu, the q part in the front is telling you it's q conjugation and that's a downward thing and if they say ha eat it then that's zero there's nothing there you don't hear the ga or the ka in front of it but if you say nata go to bed go to sleep you hear the na in front of it so that tells you it's na conjugation so these zero verbs is some kind of thing that comes to some definitive stopping point like a goal the na ones are just kind of ongoing. They don't have a real specified end. Ga is upwards. Ga is downward. And we need to know that in order, it affects the way we use the verb in a few different ways. So sometimes that thing is going to pop up. And as you learn more about verbs later, you'll see that pop up. And so, uh, Yes, and I saw a text. And so when we see this, we see uh, do sa yi would do wakig, which means uh, it says they, but right now, uh, these days, we would translate that as people voted for him or her, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we have is we write this uh, short. They, one thing that you'll realize about. Um, nation's story is that they tend to write vowels long a lot where we would write them short. We say duh 
We don't say do. But that was just something that maybe uh, the community wasn't always picking up on. Right? And so do sa yi. And so this we would usually write short and high. Do sa yi would mean somebody's name. Right? Somebody's name. And then the diqiq part, really, it means to throw. We're throwing their name. That's literally what you're saying. Right? And so the, and so, uh, uh, this one, so means against me. So And so depending how this gate, you know, gate or gay day, depending on how it's, it could mean like leaning against something. It could mean we, we encountered each other, but it could also mean like we were arguing or in disagreement or it was against me. But if we want to, where'd it go? If we want to know how that works, we see this deqiq part. So we'll go look up the verb root deqiq. Uh, and we'll go down here. And when we look it up in here, we could sort of put it together by seeing what are the other verbs that are there. Uh, some of the newer stuff, like the newer dictionary that I've been working on and uh, Carrie's stuff, like if we go to Chaki um, Shawu's uh, verb list and we go look for Qiq, we see donate, load, shoot, lose, throw. That's what I was finding. Right, and so this is, and so, you know, to to donate or load or shoot it, they, they all are kind of related. Some of them have kind of a core meaning. And those of us who work in the language, sometimes we are like, oh, I think this means this. And then you just sort of get it from that. And so when we say vote, um, there's another way to say it, which you're really saying, like, I raise my hand for them. That's, that's another way that people have talked about voting. But it does tell you that the act of voting was something that was probably introduced to think of people. Like, we probably just talked and then just we didn't have, like, a ballot or, you know, raise your hands if who wants you know, naiety tonight. It was probably more like just talking and coming to consensus. Uh, and that's what some of the language stuff would suggest to me anyways. But then when you look through here, you don't see vote. And so it gets challenging to put it into other forms. But if we look at these types of verbs, we see to throw a solid object like a rock uh, not that one wouldn't be a ball because a ball is round. <laughs> to lose something. Uh, this also is used metaphorically for especially like a spouse who has recently lost their spouse to who has uh, recently died. They might say, <laughs> "I just lost my husband," and it's it's interesting because it has this throwing type of thing to it. So here's a uh, vote. Uh, to make a set, or you know, a sane net, uh, to throw a bundle of items, to lose a bundle of items, to throw money, to load a gun, uh, to throw a ball. Uh, this is how you would be shooting in a basketball game, uh, to throw a stick-like object, for something to collapse, uh, for something to be knocked over, uh, to raise your eyebrows, to communicate secretly. Uh, it's e or it's a, eh. so that just gets built right into the verb, right? I'm gonna throw my eyebrow up. Is is how the logic is working in Shinge. So as we work through that, we we saw we kind of came to kasa uh, naku. So we weren't when we go to the command form of stuff, like you know when you say vote, uh, you're saying that. You're commanding people to go vote. Mm -hmm. but we would say So another way of doing commands and clink it is sometimes we're not telling people to do the action. We're saying go walk there and do it. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I say I'm saying go dance. But I'm not saying just start dancing. I'm saying go over to where the dancing is taking place. And that's why you get nagu which means to, you're commanding someone to walk somewhere. Okay. And then I saw an email 
couldn't figure out how to translate kanach uh, to da'at. So when you see a phrase or like a, an email message, so if it says kanach uh, to da'at, the first thing you do is you just try and narrow down where is the actual verb. And so here you're going to have gach um, to da'at. So the one place, uh, if you wanted to, we'll see if it's in the, the verb dictionary. So the verb dictionary starts with uh, the vowel roots, and we'll go down and we'll see their, alf their alphabetizing system is a little bit different. It generally is going from the front to the back. So instead of being alphabetical, it's going to have things that are up near the lips to things that are back of the throat. So E is a vowel that comes before A, and then U, and then A. That's how they, you know, because it's kind of where the vowel is located. So if we go down, but let me see. Yeah, right, because then for the for this, it's because it starts kind of with a you know. Yeah. So when we go down to aughts and we see uh, aughts, and then when we look up a verb, it should show us there's an order to it. It'll show us with the zero classifier, then the S, then the L, then the DL, or the SH, uh, and it'll show plus D ones in there. And then it'll start adding things on the front. And so once you put something like one of these uh, prefixes on there, it's a different verb. When you change the classifier group, it's a different verb. So this means for a group of people to walk. So if I'm telling a group of people to go vote, I would say y'all go, not nagu, naya, because there are some verbs that change the verb when it's plural, and a lot of them are, a lot of the going ones, walking, running, flying, they're singular and plurals for them. And so here's the one with the D, and then we see wush ka nach de at to assemble, congregate, gather together for meetings. So usually if I say wush kanach gachtu da'at, we're going to get together. Kesh wush kanach gachtu da'at. We're not going to get together. So those are some things that I might communicate. And that's how I talk about having class or, you know, in the context of me emailing you guys, wush kanach gachtu da'at means we're getting together for something. But if it says Kleish in front of it, we're not getting together. Right? Like Thanksgiving week, Kleish Wush Kanach Gachtu Da'at. But then we'll come together and we've got that last weekend, then we get, the, we get that last week in November, we get that first week in December, then we got finals week after that. So there'll be four actual classes left, and then we. We rock out. <laughs> Show me everything you know. Um, we used to do phrase of, of the week and put them out online. And I remember uh, one election time, Johnny said that, uh, I don't remember now the phrase, but he said it means to make your mark. Oh, really? Yeah. It probably has to do with, it's probably the yeek verb. Uh, so we go down and we see to mark a line on something. And so maybe that has to do with it because we were using that for trying to name the underline and then the mark that goes over the top. Huh. You could find it on the SHI phrase of the week and go to a number. No, Does that still we exist? We did that a, a couple of years. So. Okay. I'll have to find that and see. Okay. Other, any other language questions? She said it exactly the way you did. I wrote it down. And then she gave the command form, and then she did plural. And then she talked about it within the context of A and B and A and S. Wow. Do you remember the command form? I wrote it down. I don't have it with me. I was just looking for it, but this was exactly what I heard. What you put I think it would be get the key. But I'm, that's something I'll probably have to ask the speakers when they all come in. And she kind of laughed and she said, 
say that I said it different every time, but she was changing the paradigm. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, because for them it's just sort of, and, and this is always interesting because you'll have speakers, but then when you come in and you're looking for language questions, like if you study this enough, like if you find a verb that's either, there's, there's verbs out there that's not in any book, mm -hmm. right? And what we need to do when you find them is you need to get the information that we need. If you can get the command form and the perfective and the future, that'll usually give us enough. If you just say, how do you, how do you make some, how do you tell someone to do that? And then you say, how do you say, uh, uh, you know, did that, will do that. Uh, don't do it would be nice too. I guess those are the, probably, those are the four we would need to know how to you then we could put it into all these other forms. Uh, and so we know enough about Clinkit that we can do that, but there's all this information that's coded into a verb, and we don't know until we, we kind of get it out of a speaker. But there's uh, quite a few speakers, and they're wonderful, they're fluent, they're knowledgeable, but they get annoyed when we're like, well, how would you say it like this? How would you say it like that? You know, we're kind of like the <laughs> ham guy <laughs> just keeps asking, and then... And so, but there's quite a few who are really good at that. And there's some like Keishi and Kakashat who have been doing this long enough and with enough linguists and folks that they, they start to know what we're trying to find out. And so uh, there's a number of different things. And, and you guys will learn this stuff to, that when you see, uh, because this is shown uh, both of these are a perfective type of verb, which means we're talking about it has already happened. Uh, then once we see that it's long, that gives us another clue about what, what the conjugation type might be. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so let's shift gears a little bit. And uh, what well, I think we have... Uh, you guys are ready with your dialogue, I hear. Uh -huh. Let's do that, and then we'll do a story, and we'll take a break, then we'll do some drills. Uh, so whenever... Oh. Yep, okay, so let's do it back to back. You guys are both on, both ready. So, now you could be right there if you... Yeah, whatever you like. <clears throat> Whenever you're ready, Katie. Wasai a tea out the gun. Sayak a wa eku on. Click wasa. Gonna cheese. Ah. Gook saye e a tea. Kitch kank a ya ye hut your tea, what echo are? Talk who ye ye tea. Ah, ye away. What's up, who a tea? A theodocal sitan ka kunas art. A was a kua tea, kitch kan. Clash kush eh. Um, should take see you Switzerland uh, to a tea, what echo are Hawaii de Hatuati Ah, um, yuck. Oh, shoot. So, yeah, 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 yeah,
Can you not hear me? Ooh, it's very faint. Ooh, okay, let me see what I can do. I hear her voice. Any better? Okay. Okay. What's the yati? Haki yake. What eku ah? Ah, tu sugu. Wasakua tea. Kay Kanasat Wasakua tea. Kusi at Ka, seal dark wisitan. Gusaya gay yati. Santa Kihinich aya ye hat yati. Gusaya yati. Kit Kanik. Ah. Itak hiye kuziti. Ah, this wa kwa wa e Ah, naski nach shat kadach nach kik ka dahuni nach ich ach jiwu. Ah, I ya get kudziti. Ah. Kleinach sika, Kleinach Dutch Han ach jiwu. Iyak hige kudziti. Sorry, I keep playing kind this. Ah, nask. Gunach chish, yake wuch in, kau tula adi, klingit kainach. Ah, yake, ziagin. Yake hawe. Uh, there was a question, so I was asked a specific question uh, about like how to say, never, if you want to move into like, it's always like this, or it'll be like this forever. Those are pretty big concepts. Uh, but here's, here's the sort of uh, beginner's finding guide on how to do just that. So the first thing is getting sort of the difference between uh, always and forever. It seems like we're going to compose a song. Right? <laughs> okay. So the first one is chakluk, uh, and chakluk is always, right? And so, uh, and then chakluk. I have heard that speakers, you could say chutleich and chutleich. I've heard it both ways. And so chutleich is always, chutleich is forever. And so you're going to have a, a slightly different thing. But if you look up the verb, you're going to put this one in the future. Usually. Right? And you could do bigger things. You could put a hortative in here. This is where let clinket exist forever. Uh, so that, then you're going to get this big wishful type of nice sounding oratory thing. But this future thing, it's going to rain forever. Right? <laughs> so if we want to be nice and dramatic, which sometimes we do. And then what we're going to get here is what we call uh, perfective habitual. And this is something we were talking about Northwest Coast art today at a meeting. And there's these big words that we use for Northwest Coast art. And there's these big words we use for clinket. And, and I think at some point we're probably going to rename them. Mm. Right? Future is fine. It just means in the future. But this one, it means every time. Like that every time. So whenever you want to say chakak and a verb, the pattern right now is to look it up. So if we go to tan, we're going to be able to find uh, the precipitation. 
So we go down and we find, is it going to be rain or snow? Passed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Twice? Do I keep passing it? Mm -hmm. Precipitate. So here's Doc Nastun. It's starting to happen now. Wusatun. It is happening or it did happen. Kesiu Doc Wustan. It's not happening. Siu Doc Gusatan. It's going to happen. Kesiu Doc Gusatan. Not going to happen. Siu Doc Gusatan. So if you change see you to glate you've got uh that's long say. right <laughs> see, you see you doc ustanch that's the forever that's the always one right see you doc ustanch it it rains all the time and then when you have a negative of this verb, once you learn how to use this form, and for now you just look it up. You can just look it up and then if it's not there, you could try and ask somebody how you would say it. And you'll learn how to put these together. There's a few different things that go into it. But then once you say play it, and then you say it hasn't happened yet, which is logically it's a little different because when we first learned this form, we predicted that the negative would be it never is, happens that way, right? But then uh, that's not it because you just say and then there's a pretty fun one, so you see ustanch. But if you could you could say tushsiu dak ustanji, and that means before it rained. And so the ones that we get for this was like before I was born. Um, then you get some complicated ones uh, with this form without the I on it, you could say Maybe it's going to rain. Maybe it won't rain. And then you have There's no way it can rain. Right? And so this is, all, this is how you get the I can't verb. And you're not going to be able to say I can't do it for a long time because it's a hard verb to put together. But you'd say, I can't sleep, right? Uh, then you'll get this one, which is like, rains regularly, right? So uh, maybe the rains regularly is Seattle, and the rains all the time is Juno, right? <laughs> what does the ade verb ye do? Yes, yeah, so that's that's a really good question. So we got to take a, there's a couple of parts we got to look at for that. So we have ade and we have ye. These are and this is how Clinket sometimes takes little things and then if you use them this way it just it doesn't matter really what the little thing means. It has this just function, right? So ade on its own means towards it. That's that's what it means, towards it. Ye means place or way, right? And so you'll see ye in a bunch of clinket place names, right? Yandes tak ye is built into there, right? And then there'll be other things that end with ye. Uh, so then there's a couple different ways that this sort of thing works. So you can have a clinket verb, oops, So you can have a clinket verb. You're going to have either an I or a U, just like when we do the possessive onto something. And then we'll have ye. Yeah. And the way that this works is this translates to the place where verb. Right? So for example, there's uh, this place where my dad bought a car. You would say, uh, and the more common thing is we see like um, a dutki children ah at that place 
Adeltini, yeah, the place where children are watched after, a daycare. That was how the name they came up with for a daycare in Carcross. So what this yeh does is it just says that's where the verb happened. And you'll see it with a bunch of raven stories and things like the place where raven pulled it to shore, the place where raven was swinging, the place where, you know, whatever. And so that's what the yeh thing does at the end of a verb. But it's going to get this, you know, so we see this I, so the same thing, it could be, um, uh, well, so that's the formula for this, verbi, yeah, and it's usually going to be a perfective, right, a lot of times it's going to be a perfective because it has already happened, right, it could be a future, like, this is the place I'm going to put my shoes on, like, I don't know what else you'd say, right, but then when you say, a day plus, Verb, i or u plus ye. Oops. Now this is the way uh, you're usually saying she or he. Verb, right? So we're not talking. So like for example, uh, there's a place where Raven walked around. Maybe we'll call it ye. At wugu diye, the place where Raven walked around. But if I wanted to describe the, the way Raven was walking around, uh, there is a story where Raven drinks a bunch of whiskey, and so you could say, Kasi ye, a day at wugu diye. It was strange the way he was walking around. So now you're talking about the way that verb is done. And you'll, you'll see this used in Shingit when they'll say things like, Ye awe, a de ha i would do tu wu ye. This is how we were taught. And so, when, as, if speakers are explaining something to you, they'll say stuff like that to, to really say, I'm not just telling you this stuff, this is how I was taught. Right? And so, this a de verbi ye the way the verb happened. And you can either talk about it like it was it was wonderful, like you could say, That was just fantastic, the way they were dancing. Right, and that's how you can use this. And then you get a, com a more complicated thing, and then you get the verb, uh, but it's got to be in this specific form, which you'll learn how to do later, plus yeah, and that means no way uh, she or he can verb. And so it's kind of a, it's a pretty interesting sort of thing. I would say just keep an eye out for it. If you want to try it out now and then, have a try. If it seems like this is something that doesn't make sense, just it'll come up later. But what you'll learn is the ways, there's all these different ways to use clinket verbs. And there's probably about, you know, so what, we, what we're learning is like how to say, happened to me, happened to you, happened to us, I did it, you did it, we, and then to use those combinations. But then we also start learning how to change the verb into uh, do it, don't do it, uh, doing it, not doing it, starting to do it, did it, didn't do it, will do it, won't do it. There's about probably 20 to 30 different ways to do those types of things. There's about six or that are really essential, right? Do it, don't do it, doing it, not doing it, did it, didn't do it, will do it, won't do it, I guess eight. Those are, those are the ones I think you need to function. Then, and I think a long time ago, this was a clinky community, we all knew how to do those things. Then there were a few of us that knew how to do these other things. And we were the ones who were selected and groomed to be big oratory, you know, to do the big oratory. Because that's one of the keys of oratory, is being able to use those big verbs and being able to, because when Raven talks, 
Raven uses these really big complicated verbs. Like we were looking at one, um, like he would say, Is there no way that maybe it could rain? And then it would start raining, right? Just <laughs> that's just how the Raven story. That's a that's a neat component of the Raven stories, is he's just this big grammar nerd, and he uses like <laughs> this crazy grammar, and then these things happen. So once you learn it, like all these awesome things are gonna happen. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's just kind of I like to collectively read these stories. It gives you a chance to. Uh, read some clinkets and at sort of at a it's in at the sentence level and it's getting a little bit more complicated uh, if you have specific questions you can ask them uh, but we're just going to get it's a pretty short story and it's a neat story this is uh, Cusky Susie James uh, is recorded by her uh, daughter uh, the translation was initially done by Nora Dauenhauer and then I think this is one of the ones yeah, then uh, Chesley, Will Geiger, uh, I, I took a look at it, then Chesley took a look at it and a listen, and we just sort of went through and just made a few edits here and there. Uh, but what I'd like to do is have you read a sentence at a time, uh, and just to get give you some context, uh, this is the way that Susie James tells stories is very fast and back to back. Like there, sometimes she'll just take a breath and then she'll just jo go directly into the next one. But we, didn't, we don't want to have just like one huge story. I guess we kind of do that for Austin Hammond. He does the same thing. But for some of them, we broke them into the individual stories. Uh, and this, this is for the Raven book that's probably coming out early next year. Uh, it's been in the works probably for 30 years, 35 years. So it's exciting. It's going to be probably 1,000 pages long, 800 pages long. <laughs> so does anybody want to read first? We'll read this section right here. Kaduk Okay, goodness. So everybody repeat after me. We'll just do this one chunk at a time. Aka away kla. Aka away kla. Kaye ashkays. Kaye ashkays. Sukaduk kakushehat kakaskeet. Sukaduk kak. Okay. Okay. So aqa away is and then kle is more like at that time. Kleye ashkes he is wishing. Uh, su is uh, the name for giant kelp. Kaduk means it's curled up, tangled up. Kakh is on. Kushe is maybe. Khatqaqaskid, let me fall. Right, it's a really neat verb. Okay, who wants to read the next one? Very similar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. You can read the English over there, right? So, sukadut, uh, tangled up, kelp, kakh kshekhat kakaski de. There's no high tone on that de. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. It depends on what type of relational suffix it is. I'll give a listen and see if it needs one on there. Because it, it might be something that we just missed. I would predict that it's on there. It should be. 
but then sometimes it isn't. Okay, who wants to read the next line? You are where to turn who you are, yes. Okay. You are where to turn who you are, yes. You are where to turn who you are, yes. Okay, so you are where? Uh, this is how, or this is the, this is how it is, kind of. You, we'll hear ye away much more often than you away. Um, to tun, uh, she or he is wishing for it, hoping for it. It's just a different way to say, a chase is like a, a really strong wish. And to tun is just like, I'm really hoping for this thing. Hokoa, him though, yeish, raven. Okay, someone else read the next one. The goal is we'll all read once and then we'll take a break. Sukadutka, chet kakaskit. Okay, sukadutka, chet kakaskit. Okay. Okay, so he's repeating. Let me fall on the, a bunch of tangled kelp. Somebody read the next line. Tle cha ye awe ke tutani awe tle. Up to the period? Up to the end? Oh, the oh. Holy mackerel. Very long. Adach. Adach tut wudi yek du hlu tle gune wudi git hine de. Okay. Tle cha ye awe ke tu tani awe tle. Tle cha ye awe ke tu tani awe tle. So then, aye, so like, just like this, awe, k to tani, the k pops up there, which is very interesting. Uh, so like he's, he's really wishing, awe, tla. And you'll see in, in storytelling the repetition of this word, tla. You just got to keep an eye out for it, get a feel for it. And it's really just, when it starts doubling up like this, it's saying, and while this was happening, this other thing happens, right? Or just at that time, adach. Oh, let's just read it. Adach tut would de yak to slu. Adach tut would de yak to slu. Ke koneo de kit hini de. So this one would be would de git because this ends with a vowel. It just runs right into it. And so we end up with koneo dikit. So this is something, as we see them, and as we hear them, we'll just, we'll say, oh yeah, there's that kone, which means to start something. Like, once you say kone, it's like, ha, kone yana gut. He has started walking, right? Koneo uh, te is uh, Marsha Hodge's name. It means begin to be that, be, begin to be. Uh, uh, it just means, it comes before a verb, but it means to start the verb, right? Hey, it, uh, is that N pronounced different since it's underlined? I've never seen it before. Yes, which, which one is, oh yeah. There are two speakers that we know of. One is An Kadachzin, Bert Dennis, Achtla, do ish, do ish, and Susie James, Kaski, who regularly, when in speaking Tlingit, like we would say, Uhan, they would say, Uhal. So an underlined N, when you listen to her say, and we're not going to say it, okay. when you listen to her, when you listen to this recording, which is on ClinkitLanguage.com if you want to hear it, it's very fast, it's very fun. She says, Kole. So that's what, and so we, we were like, well, we got to write it the way she's saying it. All ends? No. L -L no. It, if, you, if you look through here, we've tried to catch every one that she's done. Okay. And it's, it's probably 
50 to 60 percent of them. Is predictable? I don't know if it is. It, it seems like maybe if she's, I don't know. And I, would, I listened to a recording of my great grandpa, and that's how I realized he did it, because he would say, um, but even when he was, so he's, Nora's recording him, and he's talking about this place called Tanani, which is uh, near Haines, where the tank farm used to be. And he's just talking, and he says, Tal Ali. And she says, Tan Ani? He says, Ah, Tal Ali. <laughs> and so, like, even when someone's like, Is this what you're saying? He's like, Yes, but let, I'll say it the way I say it. So, um, but it's a really interesting thing. And we've got lots of Susie James recorded. And, and where so, was she from? She was from Huna. And he was from Haines. Mm -hmm. But we do know, I think they both went to Sheldon Jackson. Presbyterian. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Push that L in there. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, away from it, toot is kind of toot with the yik, like it got pulled from the inside. Uh, and what this is saying, you got to have a little bit of context from before. There's lots of versions of this story. So Raven fights with his uncle. Well, he's born. His uncle's killing all of his sister's babies. And then this heron, although in one version it's a killer whale, tells her to eat this, swallow this stone, go find it on the low tide, you know, and then uh, it's got to be perfectly round and black and you put it in a fire and then when it just cools off enough to touch it you swallow it and you have this baby that nothing can kill that's where Raven was born his uncle tries to kill him and he he keeps uh, outdoing his uncle's uh, tricks and then he and his uncle fight over the tide and his uncle wins and his uncle is which means um, you like that over there Peace is the tide. Kukhek, he commands it. And that's the moon, right? He was the moon. And then, um, and there's some really old versions where they refer to all of them as moons. So it's really interesting. And then uh, the world floods, so Raven goes and shoots a bird. In some versions, it's a black duck. In other versions, it's a different type of little seabird, like a some type of sandpiper, and he skins it, and he tells his mom to get inside. And then he says, you're just going to float on the world, mom. And then he flies up and pokes his beak into the sky. And so here, when they say, he pulled his beak out of the sky. And he started to fall towards the water. Okay, let's do a few more and then I guess we don't have to take our break and come back. I want to read. You don't have to read. This just says who's saying it. Just read this part. Asawa ye duwasaku se su. Asawa ye duwasaku su. Asawa ye duwasaku su. It's kind of an interest. She's saying, saying like, what is it? And then called. Usually we hear wasa do a sock. But um, she's sort of kind of saying, what is this that is called? So, right? So the question is not about what's it called. Dasa ye do a sock. So the question is like, what is this thing that is called? So, right? And so this is how we see how questions are constructed. Uh, because sometimes when we would, we would sort of just start changing the way we kind of refer to things. Because a lot of times when it's say, wa sa, that translate, that means how. And some speakers are like, doesn't that mean what? Uh -huh. Like, well, in a lot of contexts, when like we say, wa sa du wa sa, and that's, what is your name? That's a perfectly acceptable translation. But how the language is working is more like, how do people call you? Just because we see the dasa is asking what, the wasa is usually asking how. But 
And so, ha, huh, and then you'll, you'll learn there's a bunch of, when you learn and you listen to these recordings, you're gonna hear, ha, 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 do, ha, da, ha, da. And they're all very similar types of things, how. There's some slight differences and we try to stay kind of accurate when we're translating like, oh, ha do or ha la or ha da are more like, oh, geez, right? Whereas how is more like, well, and then ha is like, oh my, right? And so there's just some slight differences between them. Uh, and then uh, we'll do this one, then we'll take our break. Anybody not read yet? Anybody online want to read? Okay. do Uh, we'll do this one on its own just because it needs. It's got a little glottal. So, do we know what that apostrophe is? Because you can't really pinch. You know. This is one of the things in Tlingit where there's, this is one of the inconsistencies in how we write Tlingit. Because we could say, ha eh, and we'll put a period there. What if the word is just ha, just like this one? So we'll use that apostrophe like we do in Haida. When we say ha ah, we use an apostrophe there. Uh, in, in Hawaiian, in Hawaiian, it's a, an okina, so it looks like this, but it's turned over, and then it'll say Hawaii, so they have one as well. So if it's at the end of the word, we'll usually switch to an apostrophe, because if that was, if there was a period there, you wouldn't know that it's not ha, it's ha. So it's got this, and this is how you say, oh my, right? As you say, ha, and then Ha-we. Ha-we. So we know what awe is, but there's this other little word that goes ha, and you've probably heard it when speakers talk, and what ha, the way that we usually translate that is you see, because it's just, it's putting a little bit of emphasis on things, right? So you could say ha, yak e ha. And then ha way is like, oh, well, really, you see, way do ah, there, it's there, so, geesh, geesh. So she's starting to explain this, uh, it's there, and we don't have, you know, sometimes when you're listening to clink it and you're translating it, and you're, you know, especially if you have a really affluent elder, they're not going to, Clinket doesn't always have to have all the words there, right? Ha ha we we do ah su geesh geesh, and so she's just saying, oh well, there it is, kelp kelp geesh tin ka was ti ki ta ya kechna teach ka se ti knu jin ko ah su. When it hardens up with the bull kelp, it is like a boat. It used to harden up ka se ti knu jin. It used to always harden up. So, so what she's saying is this giant kelp will get tangled up with the bull kelp and then it becomes an island, a kelp island. And we call those sukadut, gishkadut, kaja, or kushtayagu um, uh, is another word that I've heard for it. That, that kelp island that hardens enough that things can land on it. And so there is another story where he kept saying kaja, kaja, kaja. And then um, the last class I had with Dick and Nora, we were working on translating some of these stories. As Johnny C. Jackson, and he said, kaja, kshe, katrat, kakaskit. Kaja, kshe, katrat, kakaskit, de. Kaja, ye do a sago at kaja. And so he just kept saying it. So he says, 
you see in the stories like Raven saying, let me fall on Kaja, let me fall on Kaja. And then he says, it's called Kaja. And he says, but the clinkets of today don't know what it is. And we're translating that story. And then we got there and then Nora said, well, what is it? And I said, I'm a clinket of today and I don't know. <laughs> She told us it was a kelp island, so that's another way to say it. So, uh, okay, uh, let's take a break. I'll see get quite a bit of that story to get through. It's a really, it's a really fun story. Um, I know we got a couple other things to do this evening, so we'll see. We might go through it kind of fast, uh, but I would like other folks to have a chance to read if you didn't have a chance yet, because I think it's, I think it's fun. So uh, take five, come back, and we'll... Max, can I ask you something? Ah. Uh, I, I was chosen to do some baby raven reads for the preschool here, and they sent me this, and it is um, Raven and the Tide Lady, and it's what it's very interesting and i can't imagine reading this to the preschool <laughs> it's um it's a lot of pages and it's dick and nora's it's nora's and it's kehne nora marks dauenhauer and it's kasege kasege susie james and it is page after page and i was wondering if there was a a more condensed version that Virginia could read. <laughs> I've never worked on this story. I have the story from Dick and Nora, but I never did work on it with them. So, you know, if I didn't work on it, I don't really know the story. Yeah. I mean, you can read it, but it, 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 it would have to be told to me the way it needs to be told. Well, the, and there's a, there's a big sort of thing at the end of that story, uh, which is, uh, he knocks her over and he hits her on the butt with a... Yes, right here. <laughs> and so, are you going to do that part? Because you... I, I, you and, know, the one I heard, and it was the one I think that Ginny kind of tells to her when she was working with the kids, and it was a little more condensed and a little friendlier. But, yeah, I mean, it's pretty rough. And then he marries her after, right? And so it's like, we said, uh, yeah. stage, right? But so I have seen it change. So he like, uh, he, he tickles her or he, he does something and he, he, you can always just say he, he gets her to, you know, but most of the versions we have that are the older Thingit versions, he, he does. He grabs her and flips her over and hits her on the butt with this sea urchin shell. And, and it's in this one. I mean, this is Kehne's, and I, I'm really surprised that they sent it to us. Yeah, and, this is from the one that, this is from the exact same book that we're reading off of this evening. So that's kind of neat. I, I, I had, I'm, I'm sorry to say, excuse me, but I had, I'm at the school. I went to a parent teacher conference on one of the kids and it was just for 20 minutes. And I ran back and you guys were in the middle of the Raven story. What was the name of it? So this one is Raven makes the illusions. Oh, okay. I wish I had been here. I could watch it. I could watch your class, but uh, anyway, I'll let you go on break. I was just asking. But I will, I will, when are you doing that? Sat this Saturday at 10 to 12 at the Head Start. And they just, they sent this to me and they're like, tell the story. I'm like, okay. There's a reader's theater version that SHI did in the elementary curriculum units. And it's in the literature units. Oh, yeah? So it's a reader's theater, so it was designed for kids to be reading parts of that story. Okay, yeah, so I guess SHI might have a different... Can you find the person who knows where that thing is? But we can also, I can look at that one and try to, uh, I'll try and condense it for you. I, I could I could I could probably tell the gist of it um, and put in some clinket and stuff, but that is a pretty extensive story, I tell you. And I saw your way do to his crew. Yeah. I, I was looking through it and I go, hey, there's that word. 
I don't know. She probably calls him. She can, well, I think Nora, the way she likes to translate it is shitty ass raven. That's probably in that version. <laughs> it <laughs> is a, it's a good version here. And she yates. Or maybe, maybe she just says itchy yates, which is fine. So when she says itchy yates, she's saying don't raven. But there's a lot of times in the Frank Italio version, especially where she's saying itchy yates, itchy, itchy, itchy yates, which is uh, doo doo butt raven. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay yeah. yes yeah this is interesting and um and right. he's talk he's talking to all and he's and they're really concentrating on him when he put the grease in his stomach and then laid underneath it that's it's a like story yeah it's yeah. it's moving right into the next story which he kind of skips over which is uh he he convinces all these little birds birds to help him render yeah. But then he starts just drinking it all because he's always tricking those little birds. But let's take five. We'll come back. All right. We're okay. Uh, Going to change. Work with that. Yeah. You know, with um, the kelp islands, when you're trolling, especially for king salmon, you go around the periphery of that because the king salmon will sit under there. Oh yeah. Yeah. You you got to do it just right because I know with my husband. You don't want to catch kelp. <laughs> There's a way to do it and catch the king salmon. Well, they would say that the Kushta used them as boats. That's what uh, uh -huh. Shikshani Marge was telling us about it. Uh -huh. hmm. Okay, so it's like a... Well, I think I did this one. Geesh, again, is bull kelp. Tin is a fun word. We see it as tin, teen, een. Uh, high tone and low tone. It seems like the most, it's the word with the most variety. Uh, and I don't know if there's a reason why it should be a specific one. Sometimes it feels right. It seems like uh, if the word before it ends with sort of a harder ending consonant, it tends to be een, like wooch, een. But if it's sort of a softer, then you get tin, like whoosh, tin. But they're the same, it's the same thing. It means with. Tin is with. Tin or teen or een. Akawastiki. Tik means to freeze or to harden. Uh, and so in this case, you've got kawastiki, like it, it's gotten all hardened uh, and kind of flat as well. Kle is then. Yak, yach. Uh, like a boat, and then uh, teach. Yachna teach means it's always like that. And so this is a good one to use, like uh, if you're talking about animals being a certain color. Sakwat yachna teach. They are always brown, right? So this teach one is one of those. It's always like that. So also this, like, you could say, you are ridiculous. And I might say, I'm always like that. <laughs> or so it's just a different version of this same verb up here. Nujin. There's something you can put after a verb, which is nooch. And some speakers will say nooch. And some speakers will say niche, and some speakers will say niche. And that means it's always like that. So we had one group of Clinkett learners where they would, someone would say something in English like, you're ridiculous. And then someone else would say, nooch, like always, right? Mm -hmm. But it usually comes directly after the verb, mm -hmm. nooch. It's always like that. How is it different than niche? Niche, like the beach? Oh, I mean, natich. Oh, natich. It's just a slightly different form. And so this is a kind of a bit of a faster way to do it. And then this one is more commonly what you're going to hear, like, it's always like that. Um, so I think the difference between nooch, I would say nooch is like, 
it's always like that. And then natich is like, it's like that every single time. So maybe if we're talking about levels of repetition, nooch is like, it's, it's always like that. And then natich is like, it's like that every single time. But they're very similar. And then nujin is, it used to be like that. It used to always be like that. Ho'a su, this giant kelp. Okay, anybody not read yet? We got a sentence here ready to be read. Okay, teach. teach. Always has a head. Ashahu ayena teach. Ashahu ayena teach. It always has hair. Heen ta nach kinde kus aich. Heen ta nach kinde kus aich. So heen talk means to be at the bottom of the water or sometimes in the water. Where you can touch the bottom, and it's kind of deep. Hin ta nach means up through the bottom of the water. Kinde is upwards. Kus aich, it always grows. It always grows up from the bottom of the... Hin, in this case, we're talking about the ocean. Right? Okay. Anybody not read yet? Anybody online want to read? Say a cock away with the greet, Clay. Could Now we get the perfective form of that verb we were looking at earlier, cockaskeet, like let it fall. Clay a cock, then on it, a wet. And so again, with awe and wudzagit, you put them together and you get awewudzagit. Awewudzagit. Something that happens, kla, and we got that kla on both sides. Ah. Then and then, that's what he fell on then. Ah. Eh. Eh. This is, <laughs> it's just a thing. Eh. It's just like, my. <laughs> this is a funky long verb. So there's this verb root, sa, which I was listening to a speaker, uh, Kenny Austin, talk about it. And he was saying that daseok uh, or chaseok means to breathe, or it also means air. And then that is a repetitive version of sa. Sa will become seok, right? Also, he wulsa means to rest, but it just means to literally like to be with breath. And then achsayi is my name, but he says you got to breathe life into a name. So I was going like, you're kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> And then ye do wasak. So he was saying they're all related. And then this is tut de sekak. And it's just there's too there's a bunch of stuff in there. But that means catching one's breath. And it, there's there's some really fascinating things, including this this is a suffix that we're not really sure what it means. We see it used in a couple different things. Um, and so to catch my breath, awe kle. Uh, and so achniyis would mean for, for me. I'm going to catch my breath for myself, for my own benefit. Okay, anybody else online want to read this one? Okay. 
So this word, chak, it could mean long time ago or for a long time. It just, it just depends on how it's being used. And it's sort of like you, you see it in the, it's like one of these words where like once you see what it's attached to, it, it just starts to make sense. Uh, a cut on it, satan is for something kind of stick-like to just be laying there. He's just laying there, right? For a long time, Raven is laying there. Day, when you see day before a verb, it means that verb has already happened. Okay. Do da day, uh, around or towards him, somewhere around him, coming towards him. U uh, ach, something is making a sound, is basically how that one works. Or he, or he, he already, de du da de u achch, he's already here, he's already beginning to hear this sound around him. At awe, and then when we, when we listen to this, uh, she actually says, ha, ha. that's what she says. She's a really neat storyteller. She's, she's talking so fast. Like, She'll be like, chak a kat satan, de du da de u achch at awe, ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Okay. Somebody read that one? Oops. Hey, do site eh, a ga a wekus a kutis. Das, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, keep going. Dasa, dasa de se. Okay. Hey, do site. Hey, do site. And this would mean, especially like some kind of animal in the water coming up for breath. Especially a sea mammal. K do sight, and the K is upwards. When we see K like that before a verb, it usually means something's going upwards. And not all the time, and we'll get to that, but do sight. And so we see it using these CH endings on all of these verbs. It's things that just keep happening. Mm. And then we get the eh again. Eh. So aqa means and then. Qutis is to look for, it's to look for something or to kind of really stare at something. Uh, it's a you know, name for binoculars, comes from, usually includes this verb. Dasa. Dasa de seku. Dasa de seku. So this is a neat sentence to learn if you were somewhere and you heard some strange breathing. <laughs> <laughs> like, or if you're on like, a teleconference or something, I was on a teleconference and someone was like, <laughs> I don't know why they're breathing so heavy, but this would have been a great. Dasa, dasa deseok, or you could say adusa, right? So deseok means something is breathing. It's breathing, right? Da seok, when that changes to an a, that means breath. But deseok means he or she or it is breathing. So he's saying, what? What is breathing? What's breathing? Okay, someone want to read this one? Anyone who hasn't read yet? Wana ne so we tle cha a at ten. Ye nahawe kesh woody woody hitch yoch. Sheesh. So we'll do this one in, in kind of little chunks. Wana ne so we. Wana ne so we. So when you're storytelling, this means the way it kind of translates is at some point. Mm -hmm. So this is a neat way where we transition to the next part, right? This is, we need to do a time jump or a subject switch or something like that. Okay. Uh, uh, let's do. Okay. Uh, 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 
So there, there's a couple things going on here. Tle is that then thing. Ch means kind of it's just, but ch is one of these things that likes to grab onto something. Then there's a cool thing going on right here that we had just talked about a little while ago. Ah, ashtin ye. That place he's watching. Ah, ashtin ye. That place where he is watching. And then the nach means through. Ah, ashtin ye nach. Through that place where he's watching. Because you could also say, ah, ashtin ye dach going away from that place where he's watching. Going towards that place that he's watching. So once we learn how to use these suffixes like nach and de and dach, we'll start to see them all over the place. Through that place that he's watching. Uh, the sea otter, it it popped itself up out of the water, is how that works. K is upwards. The SH, right before a verb, means did it to itself. And then wudichich means to like pop up out of the water. Like if you held a ball under the water and it pops up, it's a similar type of verb. Yacht. And it doesn't mean it, it like jumped. It just means it popped up out of the water. Okay, who wants to read this one? It goes across to the other page. If anybody hasn't read yet, now's your chance to read. Yacht asewege si arch. Cheesh. Yacht asewege si arch. So you'll also see really fluent speakers use some constructions like this, asiwege, and and there's a, a bunch of different variations of this, which is just sort of saying like, uh, probably, I guess so, is maybe, right? It's probably called, and then siach is so fun and adorable. This is Susie James speaking English. Uh, she says, see ach. Right? But just because this is how our old people, this is how they used to talk. I love listening to the old people. Mm. And this is, you know, it's not broken English. It's just klingish. Mm -hmm. Right? So she's, I guess it's called see ach. <laughs> okay. Right, anybody not read? We have to move into a different pattern here so that we can get through the story. Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat it and then you guys repeat. We'll go a little bit faster. Okay. do a sock yach. do a yach. So this is another, this, so as we learned how to ask wasa do a sock, dasa ye do a sock, what is this thing that's called blank? Right? Because um, in, in that case, when, her, and this is her daughter. Sometimes it's her daughter asking her for clarification because her daughter hears that word so and she's like, I don't know what so is. Mm. We had to do some work with some elders. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that so is giant kelp, geesh is bull kelp, and um, dao is ribbon kelp. But then she, so she says, ye kushe du asak yach. Isn't that maybe what it's called? So now you're asking a question, right? And it's not really a, the way that kushe works. Ye kushe, is that maybe how it is? And then that can attach to some other verb. Is that maybe how the verb goes? And then she says, yauch. Then her daughter says, sea otter. And then she says, sea ot. <laughs> and when you listen to this story, it's so fun when you, when you hear it. Because it's just, and we're not making fun of, our speaker. We're just, I love to hear those old people when, and how they would encounter English. Hey, play our Hey, play our 
So he yells out, Hey! Achpadli! Achpadli! That's a Shingish, my partner. Achpadli! Right? No, there was a P. And then she says this stretch of these. Which uh, we got the translation from Mar. We knew it was something really cute. But this is, it's very flirtatious and very fun as well. And so we'll say this in like a stretch. So she says, Hagu, Haguk, Haguk, Agu. So Hagu, Haguk, Haguk, Hagu, Haguk, Agu. And she says these all in a row, and then her, her daughter and her are just laughing through this story <laughs> because it's like, come here, cutie, right? <laughs> and so, and just the way that it's repeating. So this little at the end, we talked about this a while ago, make something small, but it also, it just, it's a term of endearment. Mm -hmm. This is why you'd say, to someone who's really close to you. When you say, yeet is a somebody's son but you say ah yitk or yitk si is a daughter but you'd say sick or ah sick because you're you're just holding on to them really tight it's there's something really just adorable about how that's used in thinget and then here's the big complicated thing where here's one of these so you say tes ade khat yeah, you cannot help me. But he likes to put the little question marker in there. You don't see this a lot of places, but this is how Raven talks. So Kesh is not. Ge is the yes or no thing. Adeh. Uh, towards it, but the ade ye is really what we're looking at. And we're actually looking at tesh ade ye. Those three things in combination just says they just do something different. Chat is a contraction of ach eat to me. Right? We learned ach eat yan uwaha. You can also say chat yan uwaha. It's the same thing. It's just good. cannot or can't. Idishi is a would usually say ach eat idishi. Gunashish ach eat yidishi. But this is a it's a more complicated form of that verb. El kakke yach it cheese you de ye. Let's do this in chunks. El kak kakke yach it cheese. You de You So Sheo is sand. Kuch is uh, on it. Here's the yes or no part again. Yach ish is sort of like you are able to obtain it. It is possible for you, right? down below. So he's really saying, is it possible for you to get all the way down to the sand? Ah, te you ashel sikha. Ah, te you ashel sikha. Ah is yes. Then, here's our verb. You ayaw sikha would mean she or he said to him or her, but we've get this ush business. Has anybody encountered this thing before? Yeah, it's in some verbs, and that's actually I think a slightly different one that we haven't figured out. But there's it's in ush kadutaja would be to go play swimming, but this is a pronoun that can be. Uh, an object pronoun like this. We learn chat and ha and yi, ka and i and ha. I think it's in ha already. This one, ash, this is like an, this is a pronoun that we don't, when we start working on pronouns, we just kind of say, well, just hide some of these other ones. <laughs> and this is one that we'll take out of hiding for a moment. And it means this person we've been talking about. 
Whenever, when we have a raven story, it's usually raven. So we usually translate it as that guy or that gal, that one. You know, in the context of actually translating, uh, we usually just say to him. But what that is, it, it's used, just keep an eye out for it. This ush, it's usually only in storytelling. Like, oh yeah, and then this, this guy we've been talking about, he does this thing, or this gal. Then yausaqa means to say something, right? And usually we're going to get some kind of quotation marks, right? This is what he or she said to him. el <laughs> So Leo, there's the sand. Kach, kha is like you see, uh, or like you know. So it's like really like you know, chasis is a uh, how a. This is how, I think a beaver or a sea otter would swim underwater, pretty fast. So then there's like probably six or seven or eight swimming verbs. It depends on the type of swimming, who's doing it. Um, but this, it just means for like, especially a land mammal to swim underwater. Mm. Ah. Ah. Achuni. Achuni. Wasas away ich auch to you. Wasas away ich auch to you. So this one, ich auch to you. This means to address someone using a kinship term, Ooh. right? And so, but when we learn how Raven works, he wants to, he'll use these when he wants something from somebody. Achkani, my in-law, achuni, right? And so like if Raven ever comes up and is using these very close kinship terms, you're like, Milan, what are you trying to get? <laughs> are you being nice to me? But this is another. But this is actually a phrase that we could use as you get to know somebody. Wasasoe ich auch to you. Because we've got these clan relationships that tell us what that kinship should be, right? Because there's there's people I know where I call them grandparent and they call me grandparent because my grandpa's Dakhlawedi and their Dakhlawedi and their grandpa was Shukach Adi, right? So that means it's like uh, in the context of a story too, like if you wanted to explain something, you could say, or you could say, that's how I addressed that person because that was my mother's father's older brother, right? And so this is it's a it is a useful verb. We see Raven use it quite a bit, and he's um, he's just setting up the relationship. Oh, that's what he's doing. Uh, uh, um, what's that S? Because wasa, I've heard people say. Yeah, so wasa'iyati and then wasas'iyati, it's a contraction of this little particle, se. Uh, and I think the difference that wasa'iyati is like, how are you? And wasas'iyati is like, uh, maybe say how you are. So it just, it softens it a little bit. And it's used to sort of, I guess you could say it's clink at politeness. Like if you don't know someone that well, you're, you're saying, maybe say how you're doing, but I don't want to be nosy. Mm -hmm. And so when it pops up in here, because he's doing this to, just to be so, so nice, because <laughs> he's going to ask him. He's asking him for something. <laughs> What's that? Elders around him. Yeah, and so they like that wasas Like when I when I speak to elders, that's usually how I'll ask it, right? Okay. 
Cleo is sand. Achjit into my possession. Kakwach. This is a carrying verb. Clinkit has about 16 of these. There's, you know, so someone was like, hey, how do I say fetch? If I want to play fetch with my dog. I was like, what's he bringing? Right? <laughs> because this means to carry something in your cupped hands. So the reason Clinkit uses carrying verbs, because that verb tells you how to carry it. That's a really neat part of Tlingit, I think. Uh, because is it going to spill? Is it going to dump? Is it... Yeah, and it's just interesting. That, and uh, Simshan does something similar, I think, Smalgech, for counting types of objects. Clinkit has it for carrying types of objects. So this is some of the things that we'll learn uh, a little later, is when you say achjit, that's the one part, like, put it in my hand. But then you're going to say achjit te, achjit sa te, achjit ka te, achjit ka kwach, achjit ach, achjit jik sa te. There's, we'll go over them, uh, and they're just, they're handy to know how to use, and they're, they're, they're fun. I got a little card game that, um, as I think that would be extremely useful for children developing their language specific directional verbs. Yeah, and so this like hand me or bring me, uh, it's gonna have, you're gonna have to learn some of these. Achjite, that's the default one. Hand me that thing. But then um, we did a lot of work with different elders to say, well, what if it's this type of thing or that type of thing? And so, anyways. Cleo ka ye na teach. Cleo ka ye na teach. You cleo ach ka ka quach. You cleo ach ka quach. Ka ka quach. Ka ka quach. So it's saying that there's there's always sand on the bottom. Let him bring up that sand, right? And so again, so Raven uses these let this thing happen, let it be that way type of thing. And we'll learn how to put those types of verbs together. Uh, because the one that we'll use probably most commonly might be nachtu at, let's go. Right? Because you use a command form for one person or for plural people. But if we're going to do it, just like in English, right? I'll say, go, y'all go, let's go. Achit ka kwach seo we da yi dach. Achit ka kwach seo we da yi dach. So achit ka kwach seo, hand me the sand, we da yi down below, dach from down below. There's that dach again. Aga awe tle. Aga awe tle. Cut show the hitch. Cut show the hitch. We yach chick. We yach chick. Who are tle. Who are tle. And then at that time, a ra away tle. Cut show the hitch. It went down instead of bobbing up. So that's diving down. It's this very similar verb. We yach chick. This cute little sea otter. Who are tle. At that time, Chak da ti a wet sir. Chak da ti a wet sir. Our ach at the segu. So after a long, it was a long time. Chak da ti. It became, it was a long time. A wet sir. Also, a wet sir. Oh, that should probably be low tone. Su awa ach, he heard it again. Adasegu, it's breathing. Gwa, kaya ashkan anach keosh with the hitch. Gwa, kaya ashkan anach keosh with the hitch. Gwa, right, so it's another one of these, as we listen to these stories, we'll hear them. There's probably a bunch of different ways it could be translated. Kaya ashkan. 
next to this one that we've been talking about, you could say achan, anach keish with the hitch, it surfaced there, it came up, it bobbed up. Anach keju dehu, anach keju dehu. So ju dehu is uh, swimming, especially with its hands, kind of dog paddling. So it swam over. Anach is along. Keish ju dehu. It was swimming upwards. Kei ash jit awe. Kei ash jit awe. A cow a quatch. A cow a quatch. We slew. We slew. So then to this one we've been talking about. He brought it cupped over in his hands, this sand. Uh, Okay, we have to go kind of fast. Ha ha! Ha ha! Ashchinta yan akawa kwach. Ashchinta yan akawa kwach. Awe ke wa sa di tu wu yak e. Awe ke wa sa di tu wu yak e. Anu shin anin. Anu shin anin. Ki ya nak a awe yu a. Ki ya nak a awe yu a. Kha yi ke yu de kit. Kha yi ke yu de kit. Aksikat we tak ha yi. Kay kay a kawaki away. Kay kay a kawaki away. Ah, tick nachsati. And he uses this one a lot, Raven. He's like, let it be that thing. He'll say, te chaskuchsati or te chachnachsati. Let them be stone, and then people turn into stone. <laughs> Take <laughs> A wet suke a kukach. A wet suke a kukach. A tehnach sati. A tehnach sati. Tetsu art you sati. Tetsu art you dark a kanashit. We take away dark a kind of shit. Take suk the kinch a car day. Take suk the a car day. Ah, 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 Ya kawe tle a ka kash kach. Ya kawe tle a ka kash kach. That one's really fun. Kash kach. And so that would ya kak would be the, like it happened. That's for a bird to land or for somebody to squat. Ak kud da se kaku awe. Ak. A west suit, o ye. A west suit, ye. a dena, a ye, a wet ye, a we ye, a ye, a a a Ah, oh, I should have said those together. 
Whenever you have this, this is right? So it's not cool, it's okay. Wait, a notion on and Kiyanach. Yeah, uh, So, uh, if you want to hear this, it is, you could go find the audio. It should be under clinkitlanguage.com under the Raven book. Uh, next week, we're at the Language Summit. Um, and then uh, let me know if you've got any questions, concerns. I know we got a number of other things coming up, trying to get through the beginning Clinkit workbook. But sometimes it's fun to just look at a story and just look at some big chunks of language and the types of things that are going on in there. Oh, right. Spell and that's a good. We'll switch that. I think some of this is inherited work, uh -huh. uh, so that might be how Nora chose to do it. But it it probably makes sense to just if it's Klingish, spell it Kling in Klingit. Mm -hmm. Get letters. It makes a lot of sense. It's so cool. Like you say, when that happens, because it kind of tells you more about English. Yeah. Yeah, how those old people would hear those. And we've got these Klingish charts that we developed because we know peaches becomes guiches and beans become greens, and it tells us how they do those sound substitutions. Okay, good to see you, Han.